Could you just give us any of some of your recollections of uh, your dad and or your uncle and racing with MGs? Well, I don't know about racing of MGs, but uh, certainly with respect to racing, one of the you know, cars that uh, my dad had that he's famous for having is, of course, the Arden Alligator, which won the 1949 Grand Prix up here at Watkins Glen. And every once in a while, he used to take that to the airport when he got on his plane to fly to work. So he's probably one of the few people in the country that commuted to work in a racing car. And uh, certainly uh, I recall him uh, trying to keep his little Bandini race car, which was a, a race car he had in 1954, the year that he died, and he was going to get it ready to run at Sebring with it, and he'd been working on it for weeks or months at a time, trying to get it all tuned up, and it got about 50 feet down the driveway before it committed some awful mechanical uh, embarrassment and stopped, and he had spent the rest of the evening with his feet sticking out from under it, working away on the bottom of it to get it going again. But uh, I think those are the, are the two key recollections that I have. The, the legacy that he left you in terms of love of sports cars, um, how, how did that affect you growing up? Oh, I don't know that it really did. I mean, I, I think a lot of kids are aware of Again, as it's quieted down a little bit from the engine noise, remind yeah, you really of all the different activities that will be taking place here. And of course, one of the predominant is the addition of Tommy Hilfiger Fashions. The only MG I've ever driven was my dad's PAPB Special, which is sometimes referred to as the If you go down to Four Corners North here on Franklin Street, oh, I guess you can't miss the beautiful ago now. Formula and, One uh, drove it around the track in the show car that is so, on display with all the various suiting. We're going to try that again and see if we can do it. Okay. Get it. <laughs> Tommy Hilfiger, of course. Uh, Let's try that. Um, so the only time I've really driven an MG was my dad's PAPB Special, which is often referred to as Leonidas, a very famous race car from the ARCA, the pre-World War II period. And I had it up here at Watkins Glen, as a matter of fact, about eight years ago, and it was the pace car for the start of the Collier Cup, so it was kind of fun to run it around Watkins Glen uh, as the pace car for that event. Do you still have the car? Oh, yes. In fact, it, the car is owned by my mother. And it sits down in what used to be the car. Again, place. the activities today brought to you by the, of course, the entertainment shop is going to be taking place in a number of different locations along Okay, I'm rolling. Talk about the significance of the Collier Brothers pre-war. Pre well, I think that's really where 99% of the significance occurs. They essentially were the people who reintroduced the concept of sports car racing to the United States. That was a form of racing over open, over public roads, over non-oval dedicated circuits that had died out right after World War I. And their experiences in Europe with their family had introduced them to this idea, and they brought it back with them to the United States and introduced it to their friends. So the Overlook Automobile Club of the early 1930s was the first manifestation and reintroduction of road racing. Attention, Chris and Conamacky, if you're still available, Ron would like to have you behind us. I'm rolling. How much can you stand on? Um, <laughs> so, and, and, my dad, for example, was one of the very first Americans ever to race at Le Mans, which he did in 1939. So he had the, this tradition of, uh, of motor racing that probably helped to refuel a brand new entity that started after World War II, the sports car. Club of America. The other interesting element, or quasi-interesting element, was that they were the first importers of MGs into the United States back when you couldn't give MGs away. That is, again, prior to World War II. And of course, as we all know, MGs were a goldmine for J.S. Inskip after World War II, and he was the national importer of the brand to the United States. But in the 30s, it was a very obscure little make that only a small coterie of people understood, and they, and they all ran them in these amateur road races. Do you have any idea what the appeal of the MG was to? Probably because it was cheap and accessible, and, and it had a very sporting uh, element to it. And America has always looked to England for uh, inspiration in many fields, and it certainly did you know, with respect to the sports car. My, uh, my, my dad and, and his brothers were Anglophiles, at least with respect to their tastes in automobiles. So the car that they introduced to the United States was the MG, and therefore their friends started thinking that way as opposed to thinking about Alfa Romeo, Maserati, or something else. And of course, the key element was MGs were indeed relatively inexpensive.